So find the power series for natural log 1 minus x. So this looks a little weird. <coughs> we started out with knowing the power series for 1 over 1 minus x. So how to relate 1 minus x with ln 1 minus x? Derivative. Oh, derivative. So let's take the derivative of which function? Which function should I take the derivative of? Ooh, it's 1 over 1 minus x, not 1 minus x. That was our yeah. big difference. Which function should I take a derivative of to get the other one? The ln 1 minus x. So let's take derivative of the ln 1 minus x. So the derivative is 1 over 1 minus x. Is that it for the derivative? Easy calc one question. So there's a chain rule, so it's times a negative 1. So that x minus 1 derivative is negative 1. So that's our chain rule part. OK. It's not exactly what I want. So we will, let's see. Now we're going to do something slightly weird. How do I solve for ln 1 minus x? How do I solve for natural log 1 minus x? You take an integral of negative 1 over 1 minus x. So I got to take an antiderivative to cancel out the derivative. So this is how they're related. The other way they're related. I could dx integral dx is equal to integral. So as long as I treat both sides the same, they're still equal. So if two functions are equal, their antiderivatives better be equal. And on the right side, this cancels out. The derivative, antiderivative cancel out. And how do I take the antiderivative of, and we'll go, well, first of all, I could bring that negative outside. So let's go and do that. So 1 over 1 minus x dx. I'm going to replace with that summation that I wrote on the board earlier. So this right here. I'm going to replace 1 over 1 minus x with this summation. So I'm going to now change the order that I've written this in. So this is the same as integrating each term. So the notation looks like the derivative and the summation commuted. They change places. What really happened is the antiderivative of a sum, I can split the antiderivative up across the sum. So basically distributed across the sum. Although in the notation, it looks like they trade, trade of places. OK, what is the antiderivative of x to the n? As long as n is not negative 1. That would be the derivative. What's the antiderivative? x plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And this will work as long as n is not negative 1. You're good to go. Negative 1, obviously, uh, I think the easiest way to spot negative 1 failing is you'll be divided by 0. So that's your big indication you shouldn't be doing this. But we're starting at 0, so we don't have that negative 1 problem. And on the right side, we had ln 1 minus x. Is that right? Yep, 1 minus x. All right, so that is the power series for natural log 1 minus x. So we've looked at taking derivatives of power series, we took an 
antiderivative power series, we did a substitution where I think we replaced x by x squared. We did it everywhere. So you can also do regular algebra on power series. Can we still account for the C later on? Or? So that is a good question. Um, I kind of ignored it right here. So technically, uh, two functions being equal, what that, uh, that means their antiderivatives are equal up to a constant. So technically, there's a plus c that sneaks in and a plus c here. I'm going to go and take that so that plus c is right here. And I can subtract it to the other side. So it looks like minus c minus summation. How do I figure out the value of c? And that value better work for all x's that are valid. Obviously, there's x's that, that don't make sense here. Uh, for example, I think 0. Anything 1 or smaller is going to give us, or no, 1 or, one or bigger is going to give us trouble here. But what's an easy x to plug in? Is 0 OK? It'll be ln1, that's easy. And the good news is everything except the first term will be 0 over here. So that's really easy to plug 0 in. The only other values that are reasonable, you'd have to plug in an x value that this converges for. So your x absolute value has to be less than 1. I could do the same exact thing with x absolute value less than 1, but then I have to break out the geometric series summation. And I just don't feel like doing that right now. So I'm going to pick x equals 0. It should work for all x's in the domain, and I'm going for the easiest one. So by setting x equals to a value in the domain. And it would work for any x value that was defined on both sides. So either the domain of the function on the right or in the interval of convergence of the series on the left. So I have to make sure my x works on both sides. And so we got ln of 1 equals all of these summations will be 0. You just plug in 0 for x, and you get zeros, which is zeros add together. Except the very first term, I believe. Oh, there is no uh, constant term right here, actually. There is no constant term because we start at 0, and that gives us our lowest power is x to the first power. So we no longer have a constant term inside the summation. And ln of 1 is 0. So we get c equals 0. So if we do have a first term which is a constant, then it would equal that? So if you take a antiderivative, yeah, you'll have to basically get a new constant term. Because your basically your powers are getting bumped up by 1 in your power series, so you won't have that constant term anymore. So you have to bring it in. And I could have brought it in on either side. I did two antiderivatives. I very well could have, instead of adding c on that side, I could have done a plus c over here instead. I just a choice as to where to put it. That's probably something I wouldn't penalize very heavily for if you forgot that in the context of this problem, because there's so many other things you're doing. So we just took a uh, power series we knew about and created related power series. What we're going to do in the next section is take a function that we don't know about the power series and then figure out how in the world do we actually get that power series. So I told you this at the so, some point in yesterday's class, but I didn't tell you why. Why in the world are these the same thing? So what we're going to do is figure that out. How can we get the uh, series for this?
So we'll start out with the definition of the Taylor series. The Taylor series of f of x centered at x equals a is the power series representation of f of x. AK times X minus A to the K power, K equals zero to infinity. And this is gonna be equal to F of X as long as the series converges. So that means when X is in I think I use the letter capital I, the interval of convergence. So this is when x is in an I, the interval of convergence. So you'll find your radius, usually with the ratio test, and then you will check endpoints individually and figure out if it's open or closed. So this AK is very important. And the formula for AK is the kth derivative of F evaluated at A divided by K factorial. And this probably should go on your cheat sheet. Not super easy to remember this right here. And this is for all K from zero to infinity. This portion should go on the cheat sheet. Certainly this right here, and probably the name Taylor polynomial or Taylor series. So if I give you a function, you have to figure out what does the kth derivative look like, and what does it look like when I plug in the value a, and then you have to divide it by k factorial and write it in this series. So you have to figure out not just the first derivative, not just the second, but what's the pattern for all the derivatives. And that is the Taylor series right there. Uh, of course, for this to make sense, you need your f to be differentiable, or else it doesn't make sense to write that down. So there's another uh, assumption. f is diffable. But I will give you functions that you can take derivatives of. First example, find Taylor series of f of x equals 1 over x. And we'll center it at x equals 2. So the 1 over x function, also known as x to the negative first power, so I chose a function for our first example that had relatively easy derivatives. So the first thing to figure out, we have to know what is AK, and I'm just going to write the formula down again. And our A value in this problem is 2. So A value, A is where you're centered. Go ahead and plug in 2 here. So 
So I could find f of 2, which is 1 half, but what happens if I take derivative of f of 2? What will I get? 0. So I don't want to plug in a until I've finished my derivatives. So I need to take my derivatives first and then plug in 2. So don't plug in 2 first. So the 0 derivative, which is don't take any derivatives, that's just x to the negative first. So that's the 0 derivative. The first derivative, I don't think I've used this notation, at least not recently, the parenthesized notation. I'm using this because once you go past three or four derivatives, when you write prime, 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 at some point it gets really silly. So somewhere around the third or fourth derivative, it gets ridiculous to keep writing primes. So we're going to use this notation for the uh, derivative. So first derivative, negative 1 x to the negative 2 power. Second derivative, it might seem a little silly to leave these products written like this, but you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. Third derivative, so you can probably see the pattern happening from this right here. I'm going to sort out these positive negatives right here. So this is negative 1 times x to negative 2. This is positive 1 times 2 x to negative 3. This next one, there's three negatives. So it's negative 1 times 2 times 3 x to the negative fourth. So first thing notice, the signs are alternating. So we just saw alternating series, it was one of our last sections. So this should have a negative 1 either to the n or negative 1 to the n plus 1. So it'll have one of those two. So alternate signs. And I think we're using letter k. So it's either going to be negative 1 to the k or negative 1 to the k plus 1. So one of those two, depending on which, if I want the even terms or the odd terms to be negative. What other pattern is happening here? There's two other patterns occurring. It's building up a factorial in front of the x. So the reason I didn't multiply those numbers together is because you can see the factorial pattern building up. So next one will obviously be times 4 times 5 times 6. So there's a factorial pattern right here. And it looks like k factorial is not even offset for the second derivative. We get 2 factorial, third derivative, 3 factorial. So this is just going to be a k factorial right there. And remember, 0 factorial is 1, not 0. So we got a factorial. What is the other pattern going on? The powers are increasing by 1 each time. Yeah, so our powers. So we have x. It's not quite x to the minus k, because that would give us x to the 0 for our 0 term. So it's not quite x to the minus k. How can I fix this? Plus 1. Yeah. Is it plus 1 or minus 1? Maybe k minus 1. And it depends on, of course, how I write it. So I could. I could write it like that. So then my 0 term, when k is 0, I have negative 1 as my power. When k is 1, I got minus 2 as my power. When k is 3, I got minus 3 as, I think I said that wrong. When k is 2, I get minus 3 as my power. When 3 is my power, I get minus 4 as my power. So there, of course, the other way to write it, minus k minus 1. That works just as well. It's the same thing. All right, we're going to put all these together and write the nth or the kth derivative. So we have negative 1 to the k, k factorial, x to the minus k plus 1. So any questions on this pattern for the kth derivative here? 
you don't need to write all these out separately. I just separated out the three patterns that were happening. So we can just see them written out instead of just talking about them. You don't have to write them out. I'll see your work down here and see, oh, they saw the three things that were happening. Now, if you're not sure about how the pattern should look, maybe then you want to write more details. Like, oh, I see an alternating sign. I see this happening. If you're not, if you don't feel comfortable about your kth derivative, uh, which is generally what happens on people's tests, the less, the less they think they know, the more they end up writing. So just to warn you, usually if you write three pages for your answer, you probably didn't do the right thing. So now our next step is plug in A, so our value is 2. So now, once we found the kth derivative, we're going to plug in 2. So, so you well, 2 is, 2 is our A value. So this is, this is a fk of A. So there's our fk of 2. Not very exciting. You just replace x by 2. That's probably the easiest step, although also the most forgotten. So don't mess this step up. Uh, if you mess this up, if you just look, you'll have basically frac you'll have uh, negative powers of x, so you won't even have a polynomial. You'll have uh, some crazy rational function going on. So you should end up with a polynomial at the end, an infinite degree polynomial. And last up, ak is this f k evaluated at 2 divided by k factorial. <clears throat> so that's just going to cancel our k factorial. Now if I had a k plus 1 factorial, I'd have to be a little more careful about canceling. So that's another reason that you did the factorial work back in the root ratio uh, section. So you feel a little better about factorials now. So these completely cancel. I have a negative power, so we could divide by that. And then it will look positive if you want. doesn't matter which of the two ways you write it. So this is AK. And now writing out the, I'm going to scroll up for a minute. Now I'm going to write out the, we have AK, so we're ready to write out what the whole summation looks like. So we're just plugging in AK just like this. And I'm going to rewrite what is up there. function was 1 over x. So looking at this, this should not be true for all x values. Certainly for x equals 0, it should not be true. Because on the left side, we got undefined. So it's not going to work for all x values. This will work as long as the right side converges. So we're going to now figure out what x values does this converge for. So we're going to find interval i of convergence. And this is just like problems in the last section. So we're going to use the ratio test and figure out when does this guy converge. You said it works for all x values that converge? Yeah. The only problem is I don't know which ones converge and which ones don't. So we're finding that right now. And I was just making a note. It definitely doesn't work at 0. There's a lots of other x values it doesn't work at. So our interval is not infinitely large, basically. All right, so use the ratio test and tell me what is the radius. We're centered at 2, but what is the radius of convergence? And then do each of the two endpoints converge or not?
And our terms can be negative, so anytime you're on a power series, you're going to have to use the absolute value to make sure your terms don't go negative. I did write AK plus 1 and AK, but technically I've written AK to not include the X part right here. So I need to include the X part in here. So the way I'm going to fix that, I'm going to let BK equal AK times X minus A to the K. So I have to include that X minus A part in there also. So do you take a ratio test of the, can you scroll a little bit? of the 1 to the k power over 2k plus 1, or do you take the ratio test of the that times the x minus 2 to the k power? I have to include the x, the x part as well. Okay. So I'm going to write out what b 